Welcome back to the Weekly Marmot, Episode 2. Um, I got a lot of great responses and great feedback on the first episode. I'm so glad you guys liked it so much. Um, one of the first things that anyone pointed out to me was that it actually went up on late Monday instead of uh, Tuesday morning, like I said in the video. Uh, I didn't exactly know that was going to happen. Uh, it turns out the way YouTube works, in order to make sure that we have it up there uh, on Tuesday morning during the weekly maintenance, uh, we actually have to put it up late on uh, on Monday night, so you can expect to see a new episode Monday night uh, here on YouTube, or you'll get an email Tuesday morning, hopefully. Um, I wanted to answer a few questions that people asked me uh, regarding my UI from the last episode. Uh, first off, uh, the nameplate mod uh, when I was walking over to the uh, the, the target dummies. Um, that's actually it's called a loft, uh, A L O F T. Um, it's not available on Curse, last I checked. You do need to go to WoW Interface to find this one. Um, but yeah, that's what that is. Um, the heads-up display that I'm using, uh, which is the little things that kind of make it look like I'm flying a TIE Fighter, uh, that's Ice HUD, that I-C-E-H-U-D. Um, so there's that one. Uh, what I was using for my, uh, my tool tips to hide those, or not hide those, to put those in different places around the screen, like hovering over my cursor when I put my cursor over something, uh, or it would show up over on the side of the screen. Um, that's Cowtip. There's a few add-ons that do that. Cowtip's just the one that I use. There's also, I think it's called Tiny Tip, uh, and there's a couple others also, but Cowtip's what I use. Um, and then the casting bar is Quartz. Um, I've disabled a few of the extra options that Quartz comes with just because I'm not particularly using them, but I do like the cast bar a whole lot, so that's what I use. Um, as for my Pitbull uh, unit frames, uh, the portrait in order to turn that on, uh, you need to go into the, uh, the main Pitbull settings. There's a section called Modules. Uh, inside there you'll find a checkbox that says Portrait. You turn that on, but that's not all that you need to do. Uh, you also need to go into, once you've turned that on, you need to go into the specific settings for the unit frame that you're trying to work on. So for example, Player Unit Frame. Uh, you need to go in there. Uh, there will be a section that says Other. And inside Other, you should have an option for Portrait. And then you can go into Portrait, you enable it, uh, you mess with the settings in there to get it how you like it in there. Uh, someone also asked me how I got my camera to zoom out as far as I did. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, there's two different macros that you can use that I know of. Uh, there's also a couple of add-ons that'll do it for you. I ended up just using a macro uh, that permanently sets the the maximum view distance I can or the maximum distance I can zoom out on my camera. Um, I will dig that macro up and I will put that in the forum thread for this uh, this episode of the Weekly Marmot on Tank Spot. So you can head over there if you'd like to find that. Um, two other add-ons that I wanted to point out uh, that weren't in the video. Uh, I use these for raid leading purposes. They're not really necessary for just just day-to-day -day raiding, but it's stuff that it's nice to keep an eye on uh, as a raid leader. Uh, the first one is called Utopia. Um, if you've watched a couple of my, uh, my video guides, you'll see a bar across the top of the screen. Uh, that's Utopia. What that's actually doing is showing all the buffs and debuffs, the raid buffs and debuffs that are on the target at the time. So stuff like uh, Sunder, uh, Improved Fairy Fire, uh, Heart of the Crusader, that sort of thing. Uh, it checks everyone's talents in the raid, sees who can put up what buffs, and then shows whether or not that's up. So that's super handy. Um, it also goes through and fixes all of your tooltips to show what you're actually getting out of it. Uh, so for like improved versions of buffs, like say um, Power Word Fortitude, uh, normally uh, the, the unimproved version of Power, Power Word Fortitude is I think uh, 165 stamina or something like that. Um, what it'll actually do is it will look and see if the priest that cast it on you has uh, talents in improved Power Word Fortitude. And it'll actually adjust the uh, the tooltip to the it's like 210 I think something like that uh, if you if they have those points in improved fortitude. The other add-on I wanted to mention is one that I just picked up. I've been playing with a little bit. It's called Death Clock. Um, this is also only available on WoW interface. I couldn't find it on Curse. Um, what this does is actually keeps an eye on what you uh, what you've got targeted. Uh, watches how much damage is going into that from the raid and actually calculates out how long it's going to be with the amount of DPS that you're putting into the boss or whatever it is you're targeting, uh, how long it's going to be before that dies. Um, not terribly useful all the time, I mean it's kind of nice to watch, but it can be really handy if you're trying to plan things around boss timers. So for example, um, it can be handy on Lord Jaraxxus. Uh, you can look and see, well okay, the, the next portal is going to spawn that's going to summon a mistress out. Uh, 
that's going to spawn in 20 seconds, but at the rate we're killing the boss, we're going to kill him in 25 seconds. So we can just say, well, everybody just stay killing the boss, the portal will come out, but we'll kill the boss five seconds later, so it won't even matter. Um, so that's the kind of thing you can get out of using Death Clock. It's kind of handy, and I like it a whole lot. Um, topic for today. Uh, by now, you have probably already heard about the new Chill of the Throne effect that they're saying they're going to add into the Ice Crown raid. Um, it functions a lot like Sunwell Radiance, which means it's going to be a raid-wide uh, avoidance reduction. It affects everyone in the raid, but most importantly, it, it affects the tank, and it reduces their, uh, their chance to dodge by 20%. Um, the first question that just about everybody asks, and they alluded to a little bit the answer, but Ghostcrawler got into it in more detail later, is uh, just what the heck, why, where, where did this come from, and why do you need to do this? You know, uh, WTF Blizz, why do you hate tank? Uh, the answer is that they really don't, and this actually is a good thing overall. And here's the best way I've found to explain it. Um, take DPS, for example. As your DPS becomes higher and higher, and you know, you get more spell power or more attack power or whatever, your DPS goes up. Uh, at the same time, you're progressing through content and the boss's health goes up. So you, you need to be able to do more damage. So you, you get to do more damage and then the boss health comes up and go on and so on and so on and so forth. Um, heals and tanks kind of have a little bit of the same thing going on with uh, the amount of healing that the, the healers can put out and the amount of uh, damage that the tank can actually soak through uh, effective health, which is, you know, stamina and armor. Um, as the, the tank's health increases and as the healer's capability to heal the tank of the damage that they're taking increases, uh, the boss's damage actually needs to come up to match that. So heals become a little more powerful, tank gets a little bit more health, boss damage comes up also. The problem that you run into with that is while the tank's effective health is increasing, um, your avoidance is also increasing a little bit at a, as you go. Um, even if you're not, you know, you're not, you're not enchanting for avoidance, you're not gemming for avoidance, you're just wearing the maximum effective health gear you can find. You're just stacking the hell out of stamina. Um, it actually does. Your avoidance still goes up a little bit every time you get through a new raid tier, just because there's more of it on your gear as a base. Um, the problem is that the only option Blizzard has to try and counteract that in their in their balance is the actual damage that the boss is doing. So then you run into a problem where the boss is hitting so hard that if your tank takes two hits in a row, they just die. Um, anyone who spent some time on Heroic Northrend Beasts can probably tell you that sometimes your tank dies and there really wasn't anything you could do about it. He just took 70k damage in under a second and a half and it's really frustrating and just drives me up a wall. I'm not even going to get started on how much I like that. So um, basically what that means is by reducing, uh, reducing the avoidance of all the tanks in the raid, instead of trying to bring up something over here to counteract your, your avoidance as it gets higher, they just knock this down a little bit. So they don't even need to do anything over here, this, that can go away. This just comes down a little bit. Um, the next question that most tanks are going to ask right away is, okay, well, that's cool and all. Uh, you know, basically it means that instead of hitting for truckloads, bosses can hit not quite as hard, but they'll be hitting more often. So that's what that comes down to. But then what tanks want to know is, how does that affect my choices in gear? Do I need to stack more avoidance to try and counteract this? Uh, does this mean avoidance is even worse than it is now and I should just stack the hell out of stamina? Um, the answer is exactly the same as it was back in Sunwell uh, when they added Sunwell Radiance and that is unless you are under 20% dodge right now which is kind of unlikely if you're going into Ice Crown um, it doesn't mean anything at all. All it means is that you get hit a little bit more often by the boss you probably won't even notice it all that bad. Um, you don't have to stack more stamina, you don't have to stack more avoidance, you, your priorities do not change in any way. Um, the way it works with diminishing returns, they even came out and confirmed that it is applied after diminishing returns. So there's not even anything weird that goes on there. So yeah, just thought I'd explain a little bit on why that's happening, what it means for tanks, what it means for healers, and for the rest of the raid really too, because nobody likes a 
a boss attempt that just up and ends because the tank died. That's all I had for today. Thought I'd go over that real quick for you. Um, thanks for watching a whole bunch. I uh, will see you next week.